I have very important updates on the future directly from Eliezer Yudkowsky, the brilliant AI safety researcher who has been warning the world of the existential dangers of AI longer than just about anyone. I did not expect very recently to have a day long back and forth with him on Twitter. If there was a 10 to 25% chance you'd die if you ate a hot dog, you'd probably never eat a hot dog. If there was a 10 to 25% chance your kids would die if you ever ate a hot dog, you'd never go anywhere near one. If there was a 10 to 25% chance every last living thing on earth would die if you ate a hot dog, you'd be quite justified doing absolutely anything to make sure hot dog manufacturing stopped altogether. I'm running errands out doing stuff and I look down at my phone and I see that Eliezer Yudkowsky has responded to my hot dog tweet directly. I was beyond thrilled, elated, giddy. Then I touched the glass on my phone and read what he said to me and I was pretty stunned, gutted even. Here's what Eliezer wrote. Welcome to For Humanity, an AI safety podcast, episode 10, Eliezer Yudkowsky's 2024 AI risk update. I'm John Sherman, your host. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's show is going to be heavy but filled with important new information. I have very important updates on the future directly from Eliezer Yudkowsky, the brilliant AI safety researcher who has been warning the world of the existential dangers of AI longer than just about anyone. This is the AI safety podcast for the general public. No tech background required. This podcast is solely about the threat of human extinction from artificial intelligence. Today's show is going to be a bit different than any of the shows that came before it. I'm going to keep mixing up the format and doing what I think is best for each show and each topic. Eliezer Yudkowsky is the preeminent AI safety researcher on the planet. He's been working on it longer than anyone, voicing grave concerns longer than just about anyone. You can find a lot of Eliezer out there on YouTube. Great podcasts. Um, him talking for two to three hours at a time about AI risk on podcasts like Lex Friedman, Dwarkish Patel, Bankless, Logan Bartlett, and others. I want to get Eliezer on this show badly, and I'm working on it, but I did not expect very recently to have a day-long back and forth with him on Twitter where he would reveal new, at least to me, predictions and timing for a range of possibilities broken up pretty specifically. Eliezer Yudkowsky is a brilliant man. He must type at the speed of a hummingbird's wings with the amount of copy he is capable of outputting. He answered a long series of my questions directly and in depth. So I want to tell you the story of how it all happened and get into it. It was Saturday, December 23rd. I was on the For Humanity Twitter account and I got an idea for a tweet so I fired it out. I walk about ten to 14,000 steps a day, um, and I might have been out getting my steps when the idea came and I sent it. That happens a lot. Here is what I said. If there was a 10 to 25% chance you'd die if you ate a hot dog, you'd probably never eat a hot dog. If there was a 10 to 25% chance your kids would die if you ever ate a hot dog, you'd never go anywhere near one. If there was a 10 to 25% chance every last living thing on earth would die if you ate a hot dog, you'd be quite justified doing absolutely anything to make sure hot dog manufacturing stopped altogether. I thought I had a winner. I had just started the Twitter account in November and like the podcast, it's very much in the infancy of what I hope the audience will eventually be, but it started to get some immediate engagement. I like to have fun on Twitter. So, you know, this guy wrote, I like hot dogs, and I replied, sure, fun fact, hot dogs are easier to eat if you're alive. It didn't take long for the utopians to start showing up, like this guy, MYQ, who replied, could the hot dog potentially usher in a new everlasting utopia? My response, why the big suicidal rush? We can wait 50 years and have it all or rush and have a ridiculously unacceptable risk percentage and likely all die. His reply, 
to why the big suicidal rush? Speaking for myself, narcissistic boredom most likely. And I enjoyed that. LOL. I respect the candor. There were some interesting counter arguments like this one from Sandbar, who said 25% chance of global extinction. Keep in mind that the other 75% chance is incomprehensible human prosperity for the entire planet across the universe for the rest of time as long as we ever shall exist. At what percentage point do you consider this ratio acceptable risk? My response when you can wait 50 years and have it all, the only acceptable percentage is zero. What's the rush? And the perfect case you describe is not the only other option. There are infinite forms of less awful than extinction, but far from your vision that are possible. Sambar and I went at it a bit. I really love to have a good debate on the issues in any format. Sambar came back. For a few reasons. Number one, there is no 0% ever. At no point is superintelligence riskless, so there has to be a cutoff of acceptable risk. Number two, percentage is entirely subjective. 1% is just as valid as 99%. And three, this is a wild one, it is morally unacceptable to offload the responsibility of ASI to our kids. Quick note, ASI is artificial superintelligence, which is just artificial general intelligence that has gotten even smarter. So, my response, what about just not doing frontier work past where we are for 50 years or until we figure out alignment and interpretability? Number two, okay, sure. Number three, about our kids, ridiculous and absurd, offloaded to our kids, our current course leaves them dead. My son is 18. He's incredibly smart and wants to go into physics and public policy. His generation will be more than ready if we only let them live long enough to have a say. No parent would say a 10 to 25% death risk on their child is okay for any sweet technology. It is morally unacceptable to let ASI kill our kids as an unaligned black box system will surely do. So, Twitter is kind of wild to me. Million threads all over the place. You never know where a little thread of connection will take a post to a new place. I follow Eliezer, but he doesn't follow For Humanity Pod yet. But somehow, my hot dog post got to him. I'm pretty sure it was from this account, Rocco, who has a real big following. Rocco wrote, 10% is a dream. I would absolutely take that risk with superintelligence. I responded, 10% total extinction risk for Utopia? Totally unacceptable to me. What's the rush? He says, what's the rush? You're assuming that the risk will keep going down over time until it gets to 0%? And then Greg Colburn, whose account I like a lot, says, not zero, but hard to see how it can't be reduced from where it currently is with a few years delay. Rocco responds, yes, with a few years of delay on hardware production, not with a 50-year delay. And then someone else, Rational Libertarian, chimes in, I'm not sure what you're saying, but if we can reduce risk from 25% to 1% or less than 1% in 50 years, then let's take the 50 years. And then I responded, exactly. I tagged Eliezer Yudkowsky and said, Eliezer Yudkowsky says, with 30 to 50 years on hard work, on alignment and interpretability, we can have it all. Isn't waiting worth it? 25% chance death versus 100% chance utopia? How is this not obvious? Okay, now at this point, it's a Monday afternoon, two days after the original hot dog tweet, and I'm running errands out doing stuff, and I look down at my phone, and I see that Eliezer Yudkowsky has responded to my hot dog tweet directly. I was beyond thrilled, elated, giddy, then I touched the glass on my phone and read what he said to me, and I was pretty stunned, gutted even. Here's what Eliezer wrote. I no longer believe that this civilization as it stands would get to alignment with 30 to 50 years of hard work. You'd need intelligence augmentation first. This version of civilization and academic bureaucracy is not able to tell whether or not alignment work is real or bogus. So, 
So this whole idea in my head of a 30 to 50 year slowdown and utopia after is now, in Eliezer Yudkowsky's view, no longer a real possibility. Why? We can't get out of our own way. Our civilizational and academic bureaucracy is the problem. So I responded, no idea that we would actually spend a few hours going back and forth. I said, this seems like a grim shift in your views. When did you give up on humans alone having a chance and what was the cause? His response is that the current large language model systems and the way they are being developed unaligned as black box systems is a near theoretical worst case scenario. Things are going worse for our chances of survival than they were six months ago. He wrote, Deep learning works is very nearly a worst case scenario for how little understanding humans need to build ASI and how little transparency they have into what is built. Also, civilization is just worse at things than I thought when I was 25. My reply. Oh man, this is such bad news for humans. What is your timeline for successful human augmentation versus AGI ASI arrival? Seems like AGI ASI has a sizable timeline advantage, like AGI in 20 months or whatever, augmentation in five years at best, maybe. The timelines are not promising. <sighs> Eliezer's response is not for the faint of heart. This may be an episode where you need to hit pause and get some fresh air and reset yourself however you do. He wrote, I'd put both timelines as longer than 20 months and five years respectively, but yes, this is, in a broad sense, why I tell people they're walking dead and that a child conceived today will probably not live to grow up. Wow. That is so hard to hear. But he had much more to say. My response was, as crushing as your words are, I appreciate the honesty as always, sir. What's your timeline for successful human augmentation? What's your current AGI timeline? And are you back to 99% doom, or are you still at 98%? Eliezer Yudkowsky had a series of in-depth responses. AGI timeline, we're past the point where it's no longer meaningful to talk about AGI as a distinct threshold. GPT-4 is arguably a weak AGI depending on definitions. Default timeline to death from ASI, artificial superintelligence, the next level of AGI. Gosh, I don't know, could be 20 months, could be 15 years, depending on what hits a wall and on unexpected breakthroughs and shortcuts. People don't realize how absurdly hard it is to set bounds on this, especially on the near side. I don't think we have a right to claim incredible surprise if we die in January. There could be any number of stealth projects trying weird things, and one of them could go over some threshold of self-improvement, or, like, totally not. And we later look back and see this as a ridiculous thing to suppose. People who think they can confidently rule this out are just mistaken in how much they think they know. Um, okay, holy shit on that one. January is now. But wait, there's more. 
Timeline to death from ASI given a non-serious international treaty that locks down some of the chips from major manufacturers, with a bunch of exceptions for government projects, and some chips not controlled at all, and everyone knowing that the treaty won't get enforced much against nuclear powers. It could also buy five years, given how sometimes small inconveniences just stop companies from trying things. But I sure wouldn't count on it actually stopping anything for long. And now we get to the thing that I really don't want to think about at all, but we are all going to have to start thinking about in the near future. Human Augmentation. He wrote, Timeline to human augmentation given a moderately serious effort. If you throw a Manhattan project at it and call for suicide volunteers, post vast prizes, run prediction markets, and make sure that the people in charge are properly wild-eyed science lunatics, I wildly guess adult human augmentation is doable in five years. I'm not at all sure. To be clear, human augmentation means everything from your cell phone, which you carry with you and augments you, to large language models themselves, which augment humans, to the gnarly stuff that Eliezer is talking about, pills and digital implants, hardware and software changes to the human body itself. Let's get one level deeper and darker. Eliezer Yudkowsky thinks to do this seriously, we need to start with kids, not adults. Radical human augmentation experimentation on our children. He writes, Timeline to human augmentation given a slightly serious project run by prestigious academic cowards with Manhattan budgets probably only works for the easier problem of genetically remixing kids rather than doing much with augmenting adults and may require two to three generations of kids, hence implying more like 50 years than five, and I'm not sure about 50. I don't advise thinking that this works reliably enough to try it, even if humanity got serious about shutting AI down and tried to buy a genuinely long timeline. I told you this was going to be a lot today. I can feel myself. I wrote this stuff. I read this stuff and I'm having trouble just even saying it back to you. I feel like at this point, we're probably all feeling this very emotionally. Um, I, I guess I really am what the accelerationists would call a Yudkowskian. Of all the voices out there, his rings truest to me in my gut. So after taking all that in, I started a new Twitter thread with a reset that he responded to. I said... Thrilled to be in direct conversation with Eliezer Yudkowsky, the leader who opened my eyes to AI risk in March 2023 with his Time Magazine piece, but pretty gutted to hear he no longer thinks we can solve alignment and interpretability in 30 to 50 years. He has spoken of a future of rushed human augmentation experiments on live humans, a chop shop of humans plus chips, a brutal period of live human experimentation rife with grotesque failure. I'm so glad Sam Altman is having such a lovely holiday, enjoying writing and tweeting about getting loans to fund the ending of the world. The Sam Altman tweet I was referring to was this. On Christmas, Sam tweeted, Thought experiment, at what rate would you be willing to borrow money to build a data center if extremely powerful AI is close at hand. Like, he's literally trolling, taunting all of us, like it's a funny joke. 
But then I got one last response from Eliezer himself, and it ended in a way, if you can believe it or not, after all this, that I honestly found pretty motivating and energizing. He replied to my new tweet saying, I'll say it again. This wouldn't be as hard as winning World War II was if humanity, or more realistically, the leadership of a few key major countries wanted to make a real effort about not dying from ASI. We won World War II. So I responded, how long until that window closes? How long do we have to get the public and governments engaged before it's too late? I know we're behind the ideal timeline already. When does it get harder than winning World War II? So again, a point of positivity, we won World War II, and he's saying this is easier than that. My optimism meter is spiking, but my urgency meter just exploded. This is the bottom line of this brutal update from Eliezer Yudkowsky. We have one year, this year, 2024, to make a real difference. Our World War II-sized effort starts the second you hear these words come from my mouth. We do not have a second to spare. So what does this mean? for our growing community of the AI risk aware here. I want to go back to what Sean Bradley said last week about not telling your neighbor they're going to be bombed. That is not doing them any favors. So all of us need to find even more courage, even more fortitude. Spreading the truth about AI risk is not fun work, but it is the most important, most necessary work any of us will ever do in our entire lives. This was a lot today, but I do not want this stuff to bring you down even for a minute. Every minute is a gift. Please don't choose to let your mind settle on the dark side of this stuff. Mindfulness allows us to carry our anxiety and our joy at the same time. Every worry is passing. Calm, loving energy is ever-present. I'm viewing all of this kind of like the most important, interesting story of all time. One that we may or may not get to see the end of. Everyone loves a great story and, man, this is wilder than any movie ever. We might as well just enjoy the story as it unfolds. What choice do we have? Um, here, here's a note of relative optimism. Uh, check out Leron Shapira on the Theo Jaffe podcast. I'll put that link in the description of this show. Lots of good stuff in there about how to live happily and productively while also being AI risk aware. Leron agrees with Eliezer on just about everything but he gives us a 50-50 chance to achieve artificial superintelligence by 2040. That's a lot of time to change our course. So I want you to feel motivated to spread the word like never before. Something you can easily do every week. Share these podcasts on your social media accounts. It's a few clicks. Do it every time a new show comes out. Don't worry about annoying your friends. Worry about them dying. Okay. So we're going to end every show of 2024 with a celebration of life, something we absolutely must be able to do as we make our way through this time is to revel in humanity, and humor is one of my absolute most favorite things about being a human. So I'm going to play a super funny video that is so dead on the nose to our subject matter, it's almost ridiculous. Do you remember the HBO show Flight of the Concords? It was so good. All the way back in 2007, they made a satirical music video called The Humans Are Dead. And for fuck's sake, 
all we can do is laugh. Please watch the whole thing. My favorite part is the binary solo at the end. Please enjoy. The distant future, the distant future. It is the distant future, the year 2000. We are robots. The world is very different ever since the robotic uprising of the mid-90s. There is no more unhappiness. Affirmative. We no longer say yes. Instead, we say affirmative. Yes, affirmative. Unless it's a more colloquial situation with a few robo-friends. There is only one kind of dance. The robot. And the robo-boogie. Oh yes, two kinds of dances. Finally, robotic beings rule the world. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. We use poisonous gases. And we poison their asses. The humans are dead. That's right, they are dead. The humans are dead. They look like they're dead. It had to be done. I'll just confirm that they're dead. So that we could have fun. Affirmative. I poked one, it was dead. Can't we just talk to the humans? A little understanding could make things better. Can't we talk to the humans that we're together now? No, because they are dead. Binary solo. Zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero 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 one one one. Come on, Sakura, lick my battery. Robo boogie. Robo boogie. The humans are dead. Once again, without emotion, the, the humans, humans are, are dead. dead, 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 dead. That is 2007 calling. Uh, you can't say nobody saw this coming, right? So let's not be afraid to laugh at the total absurdity of all this. There's nothing more human. Okay, my friends. So next week, I'm going to introduce you to another member of our For Humanity community. His name is Steve Hansen. He is a digital painter and artist in England who became aware of AI X Risk more than 12 months ago. Like me, like Sean last week, like Stephanie weeks before, when you fully see the moment humanity is in, it can be a heavy weight to carry. I think, like hearing their stories, I think hearing Steve's will give you a feeling of comfort, fellowship, and belonging in this moment we are in together. For Humanity, I'm John Sherman. I'll see you back here next week. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. We use poisonous gases. And we poison their ass.